praying with us, he said, causing Krabby to almost start vibrating. He blinked as he remembered something. The aura trainee reached into his pocket and took out his Pokedex, raising it to point it at Krabby. With the push of a button it activated. Krabby, the river crab Pokemon, the red machine droned. Living on sandy beaches in burrows it digs, Krabby can grow back its pincers if they break off in battle. This Krabby is male and knows the moves Bubble Beam, Harden, Crabhammer and Vice Grip. This Krabby has the ability Shell Armor, which means that enemies won't be able to land critical hits. Ash whistled. Nice, he commented, causing Krabby to grin at him. Does that mean you'll use me for your gym match? Krabby asked hopefully, giving Ash a pleading stare. No, sorry, Ash shook his head and gave Krabby an apologetic smile. Seeing the pained look on Krabby's face he hastened to explain his decision. The Vermilion City Gym Leader specializes in electric-type Pokemon, he said, making Krabby wince. I wouldn't dare send you out against an electric-type Pokemon, not even mentioning the fact that I haven't been able to train with you yet and make some strategies specially tailored for you. Without that I'm simply not comfortable sending you out. Krabby nodded in understanding, but his eyes were still downcast. I understand. Chin up, Krabby, Ash said, causing Krabby to look up at him. I already have a few ideas as to how to use you in battle and a few attacks I think you should learn, he smiled at the suddenly hopeful glimmer in Krabby's eyes. Give it a few days and you'll be ready for a real battle. Krabby once again grinned and started grinding his pincers together in anticipation. Then who will you be using in your gym match? Pidgeotto finally spoke up, sending Ash a shrewd look. That depends, Ash answered calmly, it comes down to how many Pokemon we will be allowed to use. If it's one-on-one -on -one I'll use Pikachu. His ability makes all electric type attacks useless. He'll be my ace for the upcoming battle, the aura trainee found himself grinning at that statement. He couldn't wait to see Lieutenant. Surge's face when he realized his most powerful attacks would be totally ineffective. Pidgeotto nodded, understanding his reasoning. Her sharp eyes narrowed. And if it comes down to multiple matchups? Ash grimaced and answered. If it's two on two I'll include Charmander, he said. Charmander perked up and a big grin spread across his muzzle, displaying razor sharp teeth. If it's three on three I'll have to use you as well, Ash continued, and immediately caught onto Pidgeotto's grimace. He shot her a reassuring smile. Relax, Pidgeotto. I already have a tactic in mind that will allow you to overcome electric types. I'll discuss it with you later. Pidgeotto looked intrigued at this mystery strategy, but held her curiosity in check and nodded at her trainer. And if it's more than three on three? Pikachu asked, although he had a sneaking suspicion of what his trainer had in mind. If it comes to that and you three are all knocked out I'll use Lucario. Ash announced, and that answered everything. There was no doubt in the minds of everyone present, except for maybe Krabby, that if Ash sent out Lucario he would attain victory no matter what. Suddenly, the door leading into the room slammed open. Everyone turned to look and saw Annabelle standing in the doorway with Evie on her shoulder and her Pokeballs in hand. Ash could easily see the tightness around her eyes and the subtle clenching of her fists. She shot him a hard look. Let's go. Annabelle looked at the Vermilion City gym, eyes as hard as diamonds. She hardly noticed the architecture of the building, and scoffed at it, Che. Ash was considerably more impressed. His eyes scanned over every inch of the building, a remodeled warehouse, he realized. The building was painted a light green, with bright yellow stylized electric bolts crisscrossing over its exterior. Crystal clear windows lined the outside as well, giving the building a feeling of openness. Bold letters were embroiled right over the entrance, loudly stating, Vermilion City Gym. Annabelle marched forwards and slammed, not pushed, but slammed the double doors open. She walked in, her posture tense and erect, and Ash followed, Lucario trailing behind him and Pikachu on his shoulder. So, suddenly, a deep, masculine and booming voice announced. Who comes knocking open my door? I do, Annabelle said steel hidden in her voice, and came to a stop. A hulk of a man with erect blonde hair appeared in front of them, obviously the gym leader. L.T. Serge smirked and cooed at her, ah, does a little baby like to play with the big boys, he said and burst out laughing when Annabelle colored in what he believed to be embarrassment. 
That's all right, the former army man continued, smirking widely, I'll go easy on you. Annabelle clenched her fists and growled wordlessly at Lieutenant Serge, getting a chuckle out of the man. Ash stepped around Annabelle and spotted Lieutenant Serge. He grinned widely and waved at the man. Hey, Lieutenant Serge. Long time no see. LT. Serge was a hulk of a man. He was at least twice Ash's height and almost ten times his bulk. The man was chiseled like a rock, and the constant smirk playing across his lips made him out to be the ultimate hard ass. A man as tough as granite and as sharp as a diamond-tipped knife. So Ash found it slightly amusing when he saw Serge's eyes widening in surprise. A grin replaced the smirk on Lieutenant Serge's face. Hey there runt, he boomed. It has indeed been a long time, and look at you. You're all grown up, maybe not a lot, but there has definitely been some improvement, the man leaned in and looked at him more closely. You're still a runt, though. Ash simply snorted at that remark and waved him off. He was more than acquainted with Lieutenant Serge's sense of humor. It was all in good fun. Annabelle twitched. Ash, she said, a noticeable strain to her voice, how exactly do you know Lieutenant Serge? Ash snorted and shook his head. Oh, that's easy. My mother and I had gotten lost in the city. He sighed. Go figure. Anyway, we ran into Serge, he decided to help us, showed us the way back to the hotel, and voila. I met Serge. Serge laughed. You both just looked so cute, all lost and helpless. I couldn't just ignore the both of you. Annabelle gained a tick mark and took a bold step forwards, glaring at the rugged man in front of her. Enough. She snapped. I came here to challenge you, not to listen to you both rambling on about years long since past. Serge regained his eager grin. You're right there, girly. Come on over, and we'll begin, he announced and turned around. The man walked around the battlefield, a simple square of dirt with white lines over it, nothing that would give a Pokemon an advantage or disadvantage, and took up his spot at one end of the battlefield. Annabelle followed suit and took up her position on the other end. Ash, meanwhile, took a place on the bleachers to the side. Lucario sat down beside him and Pikachu was as usual on his shoulder. All three were watching intently, not trying to miss anything that could be important later on for Ash's own match. The rules are simple, Serge announced as he took out a Pokeball, enlarged it, and spun it on the tip of his finger. Three on three. Only the challenger is allowed to switch Pokemon. The battle will be over when one side's Pokemon are unable to continue. He stopped spinning his Pokeball and caught it firmly in the palm of his hand, holding it out toward Annabelle. Is that clear? Annabelle nodded and took out her own Pokeball. Crystal, she muttered, an undertone of hostility to her voice. Begin. Serge roared and hurled his Pokeball high up into the air. A flash of white later and a magneton had appeared on the field, floating only a scant few centimeters above the dirt. It whirled angrily at Annabelle high-voltage sparks jumping off of its iron-hard shell as it did so. Annabelle released her own Pokemon moments later. Her munchlax materialized, for once a hard look on its otherwise happy face and he smashed his clenched fists together, creating a minor shockwave. Serge's eager grin widened at the sight. Nice, very nice. Perhaps this will be my battle of the week, he absently mused, and then his sharp eyes narrowed. Let's start of strong. Magneton. Used Zap Cannon. Magneton. The electric type screeched in response, no words, just a wordless growl of eagerness. The magnet sticking out of its body angled towards Munchlax as electricity gathered in front of it, forming a tight sphere of concentrated electrical power. With a spin of its body, Magneton sent the attack flying straight towards Munchlax. Annabelle's growled order was shortened to the point. Ice Punch. Munchlax allowed a happy grin to appear on his face as he reared back his right first. Focusing intently, the power of ice and frost coated the limb, the powerful attack at the ready and able to be used at a moment's notice. The zap cannon had crossed the distance between it and Munchlax in half a second. Whoosh shrk. And was destroyed with a lightning quick ice punch, the speed of the blow parting the air and detonating the zap cannon into an explosion, sending small and weak bolts of lightning every which way. Yes, Annabelle crowed. Follow up with ice beam. Munchlax cocked his head back and opened his big mouth wide, taking a deep breath and concentrating. 
A sphere of pale icy blue energy formed immediately. Thrusting his head forwards Munchlax unleashed a zigzagging ice beam straight towards Magneton. Surge smirked. Nice. His eyes hardened. Shield. The magnets of Magneton burned a bright yellow, a Herculean amount of electricity gathering there, the tips sparking erratically. Arcs of lightning jumped all over Magneton's metallic shell, casting short-lived shadows everywhere. Just as the ice beam was about to strike the steel type the arcs of lightning exploded outwards and formed a sphere of electricity around Magneton. Ice beam was stopped cold in its tracks, not even making an inch of headway into the protective sphere. Get close, Surge commanded. He grinned nastily. Bash it to pieces. Magneton screeched in response and rocketed forwards, maintaining its shield of electricity as it did so. It closed the distance between itself and Munchlax in seconds, who tried to halt its advance unsuccessfully by continuously blasting the sphere with ice beams. Dodge, Annabelle shouted at the last second, panic in her eyes. Munchlax stopped blasting ice beams and jumped to the right with far more agility than one would expect from such an ungainly looking Pokemon. He evaded the attack by the skin of his teeth and landed a short ways away, rolling to a stop and coming to a halt on his knees, head down and panting lightly from the narrow miss. It ultimately didn't matter. Look out. Munchlax looked up, shock overtaking his features for a split second, before it was replaced by agony as Magneton barreled into him headlong with its shield. Munchlax was picked up off of his feet and ramming into the side of the gym. Magneton continued grinding into the wall, practically squashing Munchlax between its shield and the wall, before backing off a few moments later and allowing its shield to dissipate. Munchlax was embedded into the wall, stuck and completely knocked out cold. Eyes wide with shock and horror, Annabelle returned him. Horror quickly turned to anger, and then to blistering rage. Grr, she growled, her body shaking in rage at her opponent's brutal attack. Ash's eyes own eyes were wide as well. So where Pikachu's while Lucario's had gained a sharper look. I want to learn that, Pikachu announced. The awe was audible in his voice. You will, Ash said as he absently rubbed Pikachu behind the ears, his eyes practically glued to the battle below. He was watching a veteran battling, he realized, someone who was an expert in his chosen element. There was so much to learn from simply looking at Serge's battle tactics. He couldn't look away, certainly not now. Annabelle calmed herself with immense effort and took out her next Pokeball. Kadabra, I need your help. The psychic type materialized and took one look around. Kadabra immediately tensed. A short mental communication between him and his trainer had him raising his spoon. Surge started when without any verbal communication Kadabra seized Magneton with a powerful confusion attack. Break free. He shouted, his face muscles lightly flexing as he hollered his commands. Use Thunderbolt. Kadabra didn't give it the chance. With a thought Magneton rocketed backwards and slammed into the wall behind it, causing it to crack from the force. Kadabra continued bashing Magneton repeatedly into the wall until it looked sufficiently confused, and then applied Herculean force on it, trying to squash all the resistance out of it. Magneton groaned and Surge finally had enough. Try attack. The top screw and the two bottom screws that held the three bodies of Magneton together started shining brightly in spite of the immense force being exerted on its steely body. The top one gathered electricity, the bottom left one gathered ice energy, and the bottom right one gathered heat energy. A thin white line joined all three spheres together, causing the energies to start mixing, forming a bright white triangle with different energy spheres at each tip. Grr. Magneton growled lowly and fired the attack straight at Kadabra with immense speed. Kadabra's fiercely glowing eyes widened and he tried to dodge, but he was neither a fast nor an agile Pokemon. The tri-attack struck it straight in the chest, causing a loss of concentration, freeing Magneton from its mental grip. Kadabra smashed into the gym wall amidst an explosion of dust and dirt. Kadabra! Annabelle shouted. She swiftly closed her eyes and focused on her bond with her Pokemon. The Pokemon trainer sighed in relief when she felt Kadabra respond. The attack had done considerable damage, but not anywhere near enough to knock out her friend. Annabelle opened her eyes and reviewed the situation. Magneton looked tired, the brutal attack Kadabra had done on it taking its toll, while Kadabra had been damaged as well, but much less than Magneton. 
the battle could still go either way. One look at Serge and she felt victory already flare up in her chest. Annabelle focused on the bond that she shared with her Pokemon and gave an order. Hold still, she said, and Kadabra perked up, the action hidden thanks to the big screen of dust. Once it lowers its guard use Psybeam. This matches ours, Serge declared. He grinned at Annabelle. A good attempt, you had me worried there for a second, but it just wasn't go. Now, Annabelle shouted. Kadabra reacted accordingly. The multicolored beam of psychic energy speared out of the dust, and struck the completely surprised Magneton, who had foolishly dropped its guard after its trainer had declared victory. The electric type screeched and was knocked back into a wall with a dull thud, cracking the stone from the force, and was knocked out cold. Serge gaped, a shocked expression on his face. He had been completely taken by surprise. Annabelle smirked and pumped her fist in victory. Yes. The gobsmacked expression melted away from Serge's face and was replaced with a calm, if not a slightly annoyed look. He calmly recalled Magneton. Good job, he praised his Pokemon before stuffing the Pokeball away. Sighing, Serge's eyes locked onto Annabelle. Not bad, he admitted. You waited for just the right moment to strike, and acted decisively. That's a sign of a good trainer. But it won't be enough to beat me. Serge declared, taking out his next Pokeball and hurling it into the air. He laughed as his chosen Pokemon slowly coalesced in front of him. A few seconds later Annabelle recognized the form of a powerfully built Raichu. The electric type smirked arrogantly at her and beat his tail against the ground, kicking up a shower of sparks. Kadabra took a step back. He could clearly feel the power emanating from Raichu, and it eclipsed his by far. The psychic type's eyes narrowed and he planted his feet firmly into the ground, readying himself for combat. Annabelle picked up on this and gave an imperceptible smile. That's right. No matter how outclassed we are we won't be giving up. Thunderbolt, Surge ordered calmly, a calm grin reappearing on his face. Follow with focus blast. Send them right back. Raichu's cheek pouches glowed a bright white as he gathered his energy, causing them to spark violently. At the same time he put his paws together and formed the compact blue sphere of focus blast. Grinning nastily, Raichu sent a bright surge of electricity straight at Kadabra, hurling the focus blast close after it. Kadabra raised his spoon as he focused his power, causing the utensil to bend. He mentally, grabbed, Raichu's thunderbolt and exerted immense energy to send it right back, making it boomerang right back to its sender. The psychic type only just spotted the focus blast mere moments before it would have struck him. Reacting quickly he also mentally caught the offending sphere and sent it rocketing back to sender. Surge and Raichu gave identical grins at the incoming thunderbolt. The electric type didn't bother dodging. He simply allowed the attack to hit him, absorbing the electricity easily. Raichu merely backhanded the focus blast away afterwards. Kadabra panted tiredly. Sending those two attacks back had cost him a fair amount of energy. Surge rolled his eyes and sighed. I'm bored. He gave Raichu a look. Finish this. Use Volt Tackle. Eyes widening, Annabelle and Kadabra watched with horror as Raichu, who grinned smugly at them, fell to all fours. He raised his long whip-like tail high in the air as a shell of bright yellow electricity covered his form. The electric type bounded forwards rapidly, chanting loudly. Rare air 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 I. Annabelle opened her mouth, the command to dodge on her lips, but Kadabra was already in motion. The psychic type knew that he could not mentally grab such a rapidly accelerating target, so his only possible option was to dodge. His feet dug into the loose soil of the gym floor as he made the motion to jump, only to realize in a blink of an eye that he wasn't near fast enough to dodge the attack. Amidst an explosion of electricity Raichu smashed headfirst into Kadabra, driving the air from his lungs and picking him up. Raichu's momentum sent them both flying through the air mere inches above the soil, and continued on until they smashed into the psychic barriers that enclosed the battlefield right in front of Annabelle. Annabelle gasped and opened her eyes wide as the electricity started to dissipate, fearing what she might see. Her fears were proven correct when Raichu came scampering out of the dust and rubble, and Kadabra laid unmoving amongst wreckage. She sighed and recalled her Pokemon. That makes two out of three, Serge said. He grinned smugly. Let's make that three out of three. Annabelle gritted her teeth. 
that Raichu was ludicrously powerful, even for an experienced gym leader's Pokemon. Her hopes were rapidly draining away as she realized just how outclassed she truly was. And it pissed her off. Surge boomed a laugh. It's all right girly. You're not the first and certainly not the last who have fallen before me. Most rookies do, rather spectacularly I might add. She finally snapped. You, you scum. Do you get a kick out of this? Do you like demeaning helpless rookie trainers? Huh. Are you that self-centered? You're nothing more than a cruel bastard who gets his jollies out of tormenting others. Serge finally lost some of his near constant cheer and became quiet, and rather introspective. Do I like playing with rookie trainers? He mused lowly to himself. He chuckled. Hell yeah I do, but I do have me reasons, girly, the man damn near growled. If you beat me I might even tell you why I do this, so come on. Show me everything that you've got. Reacting immediately, Annabelle commanded her final Pokemon, putting all her hopes on her most powerful partner. Eevee. Eevee leapt from her shoulder and landed on the dirt field, leaning low towards the ground and tensed for action, ready to react in a moment's notice at her trainer's command. Serge chuckled, looking pleased. That's it. I like that look in your eyes, girly, he commented and pinned her attention with another grin. Let's have some fun. Raichu. Use Thunderbolt. A shell of electricity formed around Raichu, who immediately blasted an immense bolt of lightning at Eevee. Dodge it, Annabelle commanded. Eevee jumped to the left, allowing the thunderbolt to pass her by. Now get in close. Once you're close enough use Shadow Ball. Make sure that Raichu can't dodge, she added the last part in her mind, which only Eevee could hear. Eevee rushed forwards, fangs bared and ghostly energy brimming underneath her skin, ready to be unleashed. Iron Tail. Surge snapped. Raichu grinned and rushed forwards as well, raising his whip-like tail high up in the air behind him as it glowed a bright white. The two rapidly closed in on one another, their respective attacks ready to be used at a moment's notice. Raichu came in swinging. Once in range the electric type whipped around and swung its whip-like tail at Eevee's side, who managed to jump in time to only just evade the attack by the skin of her teeth. Then she rapidly charged the shadow ball mere inches in front of Raichu's face. Oh she, Raichu started to exclaim only to be cut of when Eevee's shadow ball struck him in the face. Oof, he grunted and was launched backwards, rolling head over heels as he tried to shake off the blow. Quick. Use another shadow ball, Annabelle commanded, causing Eevee to charge up the attack a second time. Oh no, we aren't falling for that one again, Surge said and snapped his huge fingers. Bolt scream. Raichu dug his feet in front paws firmly into the ground and halted his backwards momentum, growling loudly at Eevee, and then grinning nastily. His cheek pouches glowed a bright white as he reared his entire upper body back and electricity gathered in his paws, causing them to light up with blinding light. Now, now. Both trainers commanded at the same time. Eevee launched the shadow ball straight at Raichu at the exact same moment that the electric type smashed his paws into the ground, cratering the floor from the sheer force. From the point of contact electricity exploded forwards in an ever-increasing sphere of force and lightning rushing over the cracked and broken soil and rapidly closing in on the visibly panicking Eevee. The shadow ball struck the volt screen to no effect, detonating without even slowing it down. Dodge, Annabelle started to exclaim, but it was already too late. The screen of electricity smashed into Eevee, picking her up and carrying her all the way out of the battlefield and towards Annabelle. Luckily, there was a psychic barrier that protected trainers in gyms and league matches, so instead of smashing into Annabelle Eevee's back made contact with the barrier, sandwiching her between burning electricity and the cold immovable wall of mental force. Annabelle watched this with mute horror. Meanwhile Raichu had used the opportunity to close the distance between him and the pinned down Eevee. Acting quickly he smashed a glowing fist, a mega punch, Annabelle mutely realized, into Eevee's stomach then rapidly flipped and struck Eevee with an iron tail from above, smashing her into the dirt amidst an explosion of grime and dust. Eevee. Annabelle finally managed to get through her shock. It's already over, girly, Serge announced and laughed a low laugh. Look, he said and pointed into the slowly lifting veil of dirt. And he spoke the truth, as Annabelle found out moments later. 
Evie once again appeared as soon as the veil of dirt and grime lifted to show the unmoving and beaten form of her first Pokemon. Annabelle looked down in shame and recalled her best friend. You did well, Evie, she said morosely to the silent Pokeball that held her Evie. It wasn't your fault, but mine. Serge gave another laugh as he crossed the pockmarked battlefield, picking up a grinning Raichu as he did so and depositing his partner on his massive shoulder. He came to a stop in the now visibly intimidated Annabelle, looming over her ominously. He reached out for her. Annabelle flinched and closed her eyes as he ruffled her hair. That was great. Serge boomed, his grin nearly splitting his face in two. That was the best fight I've had in ages. Girlie, you can come back anytime you like and challenge me whenever you want. But first, get stronger. So that you can give me an even grander battle next time round. His massive hand took her numb smaller one and shook it. Deal. Still in shock, Annabelle could only nod dumbly. From afar Ash snorted, loudly, gaining the attention of all present. Same old lieutenant. Surge. Still the ever-crazy battle maniac, he said as he approached, Pikachu on his shoulder and Lucario following close behind him. Far from offended, Surge simply laughed once more. Annabelle swallowed. I I don't understand, she stuttered, gaining back Surge's attention. Why you're supposed to be sea cruel. And mean. And utter trash. Why, why are you being so nice all of a sudden? Serge grew still as she continued to speak. He looked her over, looking for something. Then he snorted. Ah, you're one of those people, he mused, and then shook his head. I guess that you saw the scene at the Pokemon Center. He asked and Annabelle nodded. Figures. Anyway, despite what you might believe I don't go all out on my challengers to demean them or anything, but to prepare them. Annabelle cocked her head and blinked. Prepare them. Serge nodded, a serious glint in his eyes. Yes, do you think I'm the only one who fights this brutally? Let me tell you something, girly. The way I fight is the norm among high-class trainers. He gave another soft shake of his head. The first two gyms usually go easy. I, on the other hand, try to give my challengers a true taste of what they've gotten themselves into. Oh, Annabelle suddenly grew ashamed. His ways were indeed brutal, but his heart was in the right place, and he did it for a good reason. She gave him an apologetic look. I'm sorry about what I just said about you. It's all right, he waved of her apology. It has happened many times before. A lot of people react like that to my methods, my defeated challengers mostly. Annabelle nodded and smiled at the giant of a man. Serge turned his attention to Ash. I assume you want to challenge me as well. Ash nodded, causing Serge to sigh. Sorry, Ash, but I'm done taking challengers for today. My team needs to rest. Come back tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I'll be happy to ram your face into the dirt, he said with another big grin. Ash laughed. We'll see about that, he said amusedly, and then transferred his attention over to Annabelle. Let's go back to the Pokemon Center. Your Pokemon need to heal. Annabelle nodded and immediately started turning towards the door clearly anxious to get her Pokemon the medical attention they needed as soon as possible. Ash gave Serge a big grin. I'll see you tomorrow, Lieutenant. Serge, he said candidly and rushed out after Annabelle, Lucario following close behind him. You better give me a good fight, Ash. Serge called out after them. The very next day Ash and Annabelle once again found themselves in front of the Vermilion City Gym. Lucario in his Pokeball for once and Pikachu and Eevee on their respective trainer's shoulders. Both looked fresh and ready, and Ash was practically bouncing up and down in excitement. After they had gotten back to the Pokemon Center yesterday Ash had thought long and hard about his upcoming match with Surge and had come to the conclusion that his original strategy still had merit, so he was as ready as he could be. Come on, Ash said and led the way inside, Annabelle following close behind. Look who's back, Serge boomed as he greeted them just inside the entrance. He gave a dangerous grin. Are you ready, runt? Ash smirked. I was born ready, Serge, he said and walked confidently towards his place on one end of the battlefield. Meanwhile, Annabelle walked towards the bleachers and took a seat as far back as possible. While the psychic shields would protect her, they would do nothing about static electricity, and she knew from experience that it would be murder on her hair if she got to close. 
Looking back on it she was surprised that her hair hadn't reacted yesterday during her own match with Lieutenant. Serge. Serge laughed and took his own position at the other end of the battlefield. Now that's what I like to hear. That bravado, that unwavering confidence. I love battling trainers like you Ash, and then crushing them. Ash snorted and took out a pokeball at the same time Serge did. Then I'm going to have to disappoint you. I've no intention of losing here. I fact, I'm planning to utterly wreck you, Ash said and absently wondered when he had gotten into trash talking before a match. Serge boomed another laugh and simply threw his pokeball into the air as an answer. In a flash of white light an electrode materialized on the battlefield. The spherical electric type screeched at him and spun in place on its spot. Ash threw his own Pokeball in response and released his first Pokemon. LT. Serge raised an eyebrow, a question appearing in his sharp eyes. Pidgeotto. He wondered out loud, and then shrugged. Strange choice, Ash, but it's your call, the gym leader grinned dangerously. I'm going to enjoy frying that chicken. Charge. Thunderbolt. Sonic Boom. Ash's and Pidgeotto's eyes widened at the litany of commands. Electrode gave another screech and spun in place like a demented spinning toy, becoming nothing more than a white and red blur. The spinning sphere glowed a bright yellow for a moment, its attack power increasing as it used charge, and then released a boasted bolt of electricity at Pidgeotto, followed closely by the compressed air wave of sonic boom. Dive, Ash immediately snapped causing Pidgeotto to tuck her wings close to her body and to dive bomb straight towards the ground, only just evading the incredibly large thunderbolt. Unfortunately, Electrode seemed to have anticipated this, as the sonic boom lieutenant. Surge had ordered had been shot lower than the thunderbolt, and was now heading straight towards where Pidgeotto was heading. Pidgeotto barrel rolled, displacing herself just enough that instead of being hit head on the sonic boom merely scratched her side. She grimaced, but continued rushing towards the ground. For Ash's strategy to work she had to be close to the ground. She pulled up mere moments before she would have crashed into the ground, and skimmed over the battlefield, her feathers almost touching the loose dirt. Thunderbolt, Surge commanded once more. Electrode, still spinning, fired another humongous bolt of lightning straight at Pidgeotto. The flying type didn't pull up, change direction or try to fly away at all. She just continued flying headlong at the incoming storm of lightning. Her eyes were set and determined, and there wasn't an ounce of fear in her posture. At the last possible moment she twisted, but the thunderbolt still struck her, making the gym light up with brilliant yellow light. Serge snorted at the easy win. Seems it's my win, he gave Ash a look rife with disappointment. I had expected something a little better than th. Pidgeotto came spearing out of the electricity her right wing firmly embedded into the dirt as she dragged it forwards through the floor and the still ongoing thunderbolt. The wing glowed a bright silver as it redirected the electricity harmlessly into the ground. Serge's jaw dropped as he realized what had happened. Oh, hell no. Quick, use magnet rays. Follow with sonic boom. Electrode immediately stopped spinning, its lower underside grinding harshly into the ground. A faint white glow surrounded it as it used magnet rays, causing it to swiftly rise up from the ground, allowing Pidgeotto to pass underneath it and evading her attack. Then it started spinning once more in preparation for Sonic Boom. Pidgeotto wouldn't be outsmart so easily, however. She quickly disappeared into an aerial ace, pulling up rapidly and reappearing as she smashed into Electrode's spinning underside, sending it careening even higher up into the air. Good job, Pidgeotto, Ash crowed as he pumped his fist. Now follow with Aerial Storm. Pidgeotto once again disappeared into Aerial Ace, and reappeared as she rammed into Electrode once more. Then she started flying around the spinning form of Electrode rapidly, becoming nothing more than a brown and beige blur, constantly racking its form with the sharp wind blades of Aerial Ace. Electrode screeched and tried to blast Pidgeotto with numerous thunderbolts, only for her phenomenal speed to make the action a moot point. She simply danced around the erratic bolts of lightning with time to spare. Calm down, Surge ordered calmly. Shield. Electricity exploded from Electrode, forming a spherical shield that forced Pidgeotto to back off, lest she be fried. Then the grinning face of Electrode came back in view as it stopped spinning. 
Screeching loudly, the still-hanging in mid-air electrode rocketed forwards to Pidgeotto, maintaining its shield as it did so. Pidgeotto dove towards the ground in response, electrode hot on her heels. Serge's eyes widened as he realized what the flying type was up to. Electrode, wait, it's a TRA, he started to shout, but was already too late. Pidgeotto halted herself mere moments before she would have struck the ground, kicking up a minor dust cloud, and firmly embedded her now glowing wing into the ground while raising the other glowing wing towards the rapidly closing in form of Electrode. Electrode smashed into Pidgeotto's steel wing, the electricity surrounding it pumping into the glowing appendage and through Pidgeotto, only for it to be redirected into the ground by her other glowing wing. With a screech of exertion Pidgeotto forced her steel-hardened wing through Electrode's shield and smashed it into its no longer grinning face. The sheer force behind the blow knocked Electrode back up into the air. Pidgeotto yanked her wing from the ground and followed Electrode. Ash's face gained a feral grin. Aerial ace straight up. LT. Surge growled and grounded his teeth. Thunderbolt straight down. The wind blades of aerial ace appeared around Pidgeotto just as Electrode fired his thunderbolt straight down towards her. She disappeared, danced around the arc of lightning spearing towards the ground, and struck Electrode with all the force she could muster, knocking the screeching orb into the roof, cratering it. Electrode fell back to earth moments later, knocked out cold. Before it could fall even halfway back down Surge returned it. Surge snorted and grinned as he put Electrode's Pokeball away and took out his next choice. He laughed. That's it. This is how I like my battles. Fast-paced and completely unpredictable. Ash. His grin widened enough to show his sharp teeth. Let's make this a battle to remember. Go, Magneton. The electric type materialized in front of Surge and screeched its metallic screech, sounding eager to do battle. Magneton, a part steel type, Ash mused as he raised Pidgeotto's Pokeball and recalled her. Surge raised an eyebrow at the act. Ash grinned at him and took out his next choice. It's your turn, Charmander. The lizard-like Pokemon appeared in a flash white in front of Ash and snorted flame as he gazed at his opponent. Charmander smirked and clenched his claws in anticipation, just as eager to do battle as Magneton. Surge laughed. Ha! Looks like the runt has another baby Pokemon. He crowed, causing Charmander to glare at him, only making him laugh even louder. Ha ha ha. That's all right, though. As long as you give me a fine battle I'm okay with any Pokemon that you use. Ash grinned. Don't mind if I do then, his eyes hardened. Flamethrower. Charmander cocked his head back, took a deep breath through his nostrils, making his stomach bulge, before breathing out a devastatingly hot cone of bright orange flame towards the floating form of Magneton. Surge grinned right back. Try attack. The top screw and the two bottom screws that held the three bodies of Magneton together started shining brightly. The top one gathered electricity, the bottom left one gathered ice energy, and the bottom right one gathered heat energy. A thin white line joined all three spheres together, causing the energies to start mixing, forming a bright white triangle with different energy spheres at each tip. With nary a pause Magneton fired the attack at the incoming torrent of flame. The two attacks connected, the tri-attack forcing its way through the flames, before finally detonating amidst the fire, creating a dense black smoke that blocked out all sight. Except for aura sight of course. Ash closed his eyes and concentrated. He grinned and made a mental connection with Charmander. Flamethrower straight ahead. The fire type gave a smirk of his own and took a deep breath. Surge looked intently into the black smoke. He couldn't see anything, and if his experienced eyes couldn't then Ash wouldn't be able to either. The match was effectively on hold until the smoke cleared. He was dissuaded from that notion when a cone of fire erupted from the smoke and enveloped Magneton, its sheer heat actually melting some of Magneton's steel skin. What? The man exclaimed and cursed under his breath. Nero Ball. Magneton hastened to comply and started spinning rapidly, a light blue glow settling on its blurred form as it used the steel type attack, the spinning getting rid of the burning flames. The smoke had lightened enough by this point that Charmander was visible again, so Magneton immediately rocketed towards the fire type. Flamethrower, Ash commanded once more. Charmander took another deep breath and spat out another torrent of flame at the rapidly incoming Magneton. 
Said electric, steel type simply swerved around the cone of fire and continued to hone in on Charmander. Ash quickly changed tactics. Dragon Claw. Charmander cut of his attack and jumped back to give himself some space from the incoming Magneton. He reared back his claws, the purple flames of Dragon Claw covering them immediately, and jumped back forwards, his attack at the ready. The fire type swung. Screech. Dot dot dot. And the sound of Charmander's claws racking up against the steel body of Magneton echoed in the gym, setting teeth on edge and giving everyone goosebumps. Charmander growled as he was pushed back and dug his feet more firmly into the ground, slowing down, but not halting the rate at which he was being pushed back. Char, he growled lowly and then took a deep breath, ready to spit fire. Surge smirked. Thunderbolt. The spinning form of Magneton exploded with electricity, striking Charmander point-blank and halting his attack, as well as making Dragon Claw sputter out. Magneton immediately took advantage of this and surged through Charmander's ruined guard and smashed into the fire type, picking him up and launching him away. Try attack before it can recover, Surge ordered immediately. Ash gasped. In one glance he knew that Charmander would not be able to recover in time. Magneton stopped spinning almost immediately, kicking up a small dust cloud. Its screws immediately gathered their respective elements before a fine white line connected them together, forming the tri-element triangle once more. The attack was fired swiftly and with pinpoint accuracy, hitting the still airborne Charmander in the chest, and rocketed the fire type into the psychic barrier, knocking him out on contact. Sighing, Ash recalled his Pokemon. You did great, he said to the Pokeball, causing it to wiggle and warm up. Smiling, Ash stuffed it away and looked up at the grinning face of Surge. Eyes hardening again he took out Pidgeotto's Pokeball, paused, and seemed to think better of it. Putting the Pokeball away he smirked. Pikachu, you're up. Pikachu gave a smirk of his own and vaulted from Ash's shoulder, landing before him on all fours. Get in close, Ash commanded immediately, and Pikachu launched forwards in reply, running swiftly along the ground. Zap cannon. Surge roared, a pleased glint appearing in his eyes at facing someone with the balls to challenge him with an electric type. Ash's smirk widened and gave one clear command that threw Surge for a loop and had Annabelle smiling. Take it. Pikachu continued running head-on at Magneton, not even flinching when the steel type fired the compact sphere of electricity at him. The zap cannon smashed into his face, and instead of exploding simply broke up on contact and was absorbed into his skin. Understanding dawned on Surge's face, but it was already too late. Bolt tackle. Electricity erupted from Pikachu, shrouding him with an intense veil of electricity as he chanted his war cry. Pika 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 Pika. Pikachu leapt and smashed into Magneton's steel skin with an audible gong, the sheer force behind his charge rocketing the electric, steel type away, Pikachu still firmly connected to it thanks to his momentum. Ash's second partner promptly kicked off from the soaring form of Magneton, rising high up into the air and already readying an iron tail to end it. Surge's eyes had widened in something resembling panic, and he quickly issued a desperate order, quick, use zero ball. Magneton recovered quickly, managing to halt itself almost immediately at its trainer's command and spun into Euro Ball in less time than it took to blink. Pikachu came down from above with a near horizontal flip, bringing down his glowing tail on the spinning form of Magneton, producing an insistent grinding noise that echoed loudly in the almost silent gym. The electric mouse gritted his teeth, focused with all his might, and forced even more energy into his tail causing a detonation thanks to the conflicting energies from both steel-type attacks connecting. Magneton. Surge shouted as the black smoke caused by the explosion overtook him. Meanwhile, Pikachu emerged from the smoke, flipping backwards and landing safely on all fours in front of Ash. His opponent, on the other hand, wasn't anywhere near so lucky. Magneton appeared as soon as the smoke lifted, showing a dismayed-looking Surge and his unconscious Pokémon firmly implanted into the ground, knocked out cold. The gym leader sighed and recalled the part electric type. Surge locked eyes with Ash and gave him measuring look. Then he chuckled. You know, I can hardly remember the last time someone pushed me this far. Was it a month ago? Six months. A year. It's been so long, he trailed up and smiled. But you, Ash, you are different. How long have you been a trainer? 
my guess is for about a month, and yet you are already a legitimate threat to me. Usually it takes rookies at least a year of training to give me even a hint of a challenge. Truly amazing. Ash chuckled, a little embarrassed by the compliment. Serge continued, his grin slowly getting wider. Let's finish this, Ash, he said, brimming with anticipation. He hurled his pokeball into the air, releasing his most trusted and powerful partner. Come on out, Raichu. Pikachu watched resolutely as his evolution took form in front of him and could feel his muscles clench in anticipation for the battle to come. Raichu grinned as he finished materializing and gave Pikachu a look over. The electric type snorted. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. You would think that, won't you? His opponent returned, grinning right back. Be ready, Raichu, Serge said, a serious note to his voice. This Pikachu has the lightning rod ability. He's immune to electric type attacks. We'll have to beat him down physically. Raichu's grin turned down right nasty. Just my kind of battle, he muttered to himself. There was a moment of tense silence after that, both trainers and Pokemon simply gazing at the other, before Ash broke the silence. Quick tail. Pikachu disappeared into a lightning fast quick attack as his tail flared a bright white. He rushed headlong at Raichu, who had reared back at Pikachu's attack and smirked at the incoming yellow missile. Mega Punch. Blinding white light overtook Raichu's brown fist as he rushed forwards to meet Pikachu's charge head on. Take this. The fully evolved electric type roared. Pikachu came in fast and hot, twisting around to smash his iron tail into Raichu's mega punch. Aided by the immense momentum imparted on him thanks to his quick attack the Iron Tail managed to match the attack of his higher evolved opponent, but only just. Surge threw his arm to the left. Mega Kick. Raichu acted immediately and stepped aside at the exact same time he led up on his attack, allowing Pikachu to soar right past him. He grinned at his opponent's shocked face, then he jumped up and delivered a devastating Mega Kick to Pikachu's side, rocketing him away. Crack Pow. Pikachu. Ash shouted in alarm as his trusted partner smashed into the wall, cratering it quite deeply, far deeper than ever before in Annabelle's battle and his own. Dust obscured his Pokemon and for a terrifying few moments he believed that Pikachu had been taken out in one hit by the immensely powerful Raichu, but let out a sigh of relief when Pikachu came limping out of the dust, obviously in pain but still capable of battling. Ho! Oh, Surge must as he watched Pikachu march back onto the battlefield. That little mouse is tougher than I had thought. You haven't seen anything yet, Ash promised as his starter once again faced Raichu, falling to all fours once more. Surge laughed at his opponent's bravado. He calmed himself and pointed at him with one of his huge fingers. Good. Because Raichu and I still have a few surprises ourselves. The man grinned and gave a simple command. Focus blast. As Raichu started forming the compact sphere of fighting type energy Ash quickly devised a counter. Dig. Pikachu dove head first to the ground and disappeared under the battlefield, digging a hole to hide in for himself in the blink of an eye. Raichu paused and allowed his attack to dissipate in dismay. The focus blast would be unable to reach Pikachu underground, unless he started spamming them and completely demolishing the battlefield to get to his opponent. A smirk appeared on Ash's lips as a devious idea came to him. Thunder. Full power. Everyone froze as they heard the earth groan and rumble, although Ash was grinning madly at the same time. The earth beneath Raichu's feet started to crack and bulge upwards as huge amounts of pressure started building up underneath it. Surge's eyes widened. Protect. He barked. Raichu crossed his arms as a green protective field surrounded him. Ash was almost blinded when the world erupted. Yellow lightning erupted up from the ground and flung the protected form of Raichu up into the air. Thunder crackled, boomed and rolled through the building. The smell of ozone became overpowering. Pikachu erupted up out of the ground, his own power flinging him up after Raichu, grinning deviously all the while. Raichu struck the roof just as his protect dissipated, his back smacking into the stone, his limbs splayed wide as he stayed hanging there for just a moment. Then gravity reasserted its dominance and the electric type fell back down. Right towards the rapidly rising Pikachu. White light erupted behind Pikachu as he used quick attack to speed up his ascent. He smashed into Raichu's stomach, knocking the air from his lungs and knocking him back up towards the roof with a loud crack. Thunder. P. 
Pikachu, still embedded into his opponent's stomach allowed his smirk to widen, and used the attack point blank, covering them both in a brilliant ball of electricity that lit up the building. The attack wouldn't do serious damage to Raichu, but since it wasn't his own energy it would fry his skin rather badly, and with an enemy as powerful as Raichu every little bit counted. Brick Break. Surge commanded over the howl of the thunder. Within Pikachu's attack Raichu's eyes snapped open. He raised his right paw up with effort, the appendage lighting up as he channeled his power into it, and chopped down brutally, striking Pikachu in the head. The axe struck Pikachu down, literally. He was dislodged from Raichu and was sent soaring back towards the ground. Thankfully, he managed to twist around and land on all fours despite the disorientation Raichu's blow had caused. The electric mouse was immediately forced to jump back as Raichu came down with a brutal mega kick, cratering the floor and sending deep fissures racing through the floor. Raichu slowly turned to face Pikachu, a baleful glare on his face. He was covered in bruises, his orange skin was blackened with soot, a big bruise had started to form on his stomach and his back was killing him. The fully evolved Pokemon crushed his fist together in anger, which produced a shockwave of thunder. Pikachu gulped. His opponent looked pissed. That's it. Surge suddenly roared and pointed at Pikachu, a strange light to his eyes. Let's finish this. Use Giga Impact. Raichu smirked. That was an order he could completely get behind. He once again crushed his fist together, a purple aura surrounding him crisscrossed with vivid orange energy swirling inside of it. The electric type roared and launched forwards, the power of his charge cutting apart the ground in front of him, sending debris of rock flying in every direction. Pikachu took a step back, nearly frozen in fear as he trembled in the face of the coming onslaught. How? How was he supposed to fight something like that? Just as he was about to panic Ash's consciousness brushed his own, and he instantly calmed. No words needed to be exchanged. He knew exactly what his trainer wanted, and his partner's calm confidence in him gave him courage. The electric mouse kicked off, indenting the ground underneath and behind his paws as he launched himself at Raichu. His power exploded from him, wrapping him in a thick veil of electricity. The ground beneath his feet was being ripped apart, excess rubble being flung every which way as he rushed headlong at Raichu and he chanted his war cry for all to hear. Pika 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 Closer and closer they got to each other, the ground being ripped apart in front of their head on charge. The purple and orange missile honing in on the yellow comet that was about to meet it halfway. And then they were on each other. Bang screech. Both attacks connected, the ground cratering violently underneath their point of contact. The attacks held steady, deadlocking as they tried to overpower the other. Wind whipped and roared as the two attacks strained against the other, the forces involved churning the air violently. White light shone from their point of contact, the meeting energies mixing and bleeding off in the form of blinding light. Inside of their respective attacks Pikachu and Raichu roared and poured all they had into their attacks, causing the light to intensify to such a blinding degree that no one could see anything. And then it became too much. With a terrifyingly loud explosions Pikachu's Volt Tackle and Raichu's Giga Impact detonated, catching both Pokemon in the immense explosion at the very epicenter. Dark, black smoke overtook the entire battlefield in the blink of an eye, obscuring everything. Pikachu. Raichu. Despite the immense volume of it, the black smoke lifted quickly to show an utterly demolished battlefield. The battlefield, simply put, was a wreck. Craters dotted it, fissures crisscrossed everywhere and chunks of rocks laid strewn all over the place. And at the very center of this devastation laid Pikachu and Raichu in the deepest crater of all. Both laid absolutely still, unmoving. Both trainers rushed towards their partner the moment the psychic barriers fell. Pikachu, are you alright? Come on, speak to me buddy, Ash said as he cradled his starter in his arms, shaking him lightly as he tried to get a reaction out of him. Raichu, Surge sighed as he picked up the orange mouse and held him in his huge arms. The man frowned, this wasn't the first time that his starter had taken such a beating, but it unnerved him to see his closest partner in such a sorry state. It was calming to know that Raichu could take a lot more damage than this and come out fine in the end. He should know. He had seen it many times before. Pikachu groaned, shaken from his unconsciousness quite literally by Ash's actions. 
He blinked and then grimaced in pain as his injuries made themselves known. I'm fine, Ash, he said in a strained and tired voice. His trainers sighed in relief. The electric mouse quickly continued. However, I would really appreciate some healing right about now. Getting the hint Ash nodded and stood up. He needed to get his partner to the Pokemon Center ASAP. Well, Serge, that was fun, but I really need to get Pikachu to the Pokemon Center. Serge nodded, smiling a small smile. That's all right. My team needs some healing too. But first, the man said and reached into his pocket, taking out the Thunder Badge and holding it out towards Ash. Here. You've earned it. But it was a tie, Ash protested, holding back his urge to simply take the badge anyway. Serge laughed. Did you forget, Ash? He said, amused. You still have Pidgeotto. You have one Pokemon left and I do not. You have one. Ash blinked. He opened his mouth, then closed it. Then he grinned and took his prize. The Thunder Badge shone under the artificial lighting of the gym that had miraculously survived through the battle. Grinning, he pinned it inside of his jacket, just underneath the boulder badge that he had won from Brock. Serge chuckled and looked around at his ruined gym. Better get that graveler to fix this, he muttered to himself before shaking his head to get rid of the thought. Anyway, let's get to the Pokemon Center. Ash nodded and followed after the man as he led the way out of the gym, Annabelle meeting them halfway and joining up with them. Damn, she whistled. You two sure did a number on each other. Pikachu groaned. Tell me about it. Raichu, who had woken up by this point, groaned as well. You don't say. Ash snorted and smirked. That's the understatement of the century. Still, that was an awesome battle. Serge, you wouldn't mind if I come back here someday to challenge you again would you? I could use the training. Serge laughed and looked at Ash over his shoulder as they walked down the road towards the Pokemon Center. Mind. Brat, I insist on it. That was the most fun I have had in ages. You can bet your ass that you'll be challenging my gym a lot in the future, or I'll hunt you down and force you to battle me. Ash snorted again and nodded, happy to agree to that. They arrived at the Pokemon Center shortly and entered. Luckily, Ash had been the first person to challenge Surge today, so they didn't have to wait behind a humongous line of defeated trainers. But there were a lot of trainers present, who were just lounging around. The same ones who had been defeated by Surge many times before. They gaped as the muscle-bound man entered the room, holding his beaten partner close. Nurse Joy looked up from behind the counter and raised an eyebrow in surprise. Lieutenant. Surge. Fancy seeing you here. Did someone finally knock you down from your high pedestal? Yup, he admitted without an ounce of shame. This little brat gave me a better fight than I have had in a long while. The Pokemon nurse turned to look at Ash and was surprised to see that such a young boy had beaten Surge. She quickly repressed it however and got down to business. I see. That's quite impressive. Anyway, I guess that both your Pokemon need some healing. She said, framing it like a question. Both Ash and Serge nodded and deposited Pikachu and Raichu. Then they handed the nurse their Pokeballs and watched as she disappeared towards the back of the Pokemon Center with their Pokemon. LT. Serge grunted. She'll be back soon. Clarice works quickly, he said and turned his eyes over to Ash. That said, what are you gonna do now? Which gym are you gonna challenge next? The Saffron City Gym, Ash answered. Serge snorted and shook his head. That means you'll be fighting Sabrina. Her psychic Pokemon are strong. Like really strong. But with your skills I reckon you have a chance at winning. Just stay on your toes and act quickly, then you will be golden. Ash nodded as he assimilated the advice. He wasn't going to disregard it. It came from a gym leader after all. When they spoke people listened. Annabelle looked excited hearing that. Saffron City. Truly. Yeah, what about it? Annabelle smiled and rubbed her hands together in excitement. I've always admired Sabrina. She is one of the toughest gym leaders and one of the most powerful psychics in Kanto, maybe even the world. I've seen her battle sometimes on TV, and how she commands her Pokemon is nothing short of masterful. As a matter of fact, my method of fighting is actually based on Sabrina's fighting style. Ash looked interested hearing that, not having known that before. Here you go, Nurse Joy's voice suddenly announced. Blinking in surprise, Ash and Annabelle turned to look at the counter, seeing Serge take a trio of Pokeballs. 
Walking up to the counter himself Ash retrieved his own Pokemon and put them back on his belt while placing a grinning and completely healed Pikachu back on his shoulder. Said electric type leaned back on his shoulder and let out a sigh of content. Well, Ash, Serge said and clapped Ash on the shoulder. It was great to see you again and even better to battle you. I have to go back to my gym now. See you soon. With that said the electric gym leader turned and left, leaving the building and going back to his gym. Ash grinned to himself. That was three down, still five more to go. Saffron City awaited him.